Hello my loves, I'm Miss Man Man, welcome to my channel. Today we are in my new sewing room, which is still under renovations, still a little ways to go, but I wanted to share with you a project I have been working on for literally years, and even though it is still not perfect, I am so excited to share it with you. This is the original Betty Draper dress, and it got its name after it was worn by Betty Draper, the character in Mad Men. I believe it was in the second episode of the first season, you see Betty wear this dress and the internet sort of went crazy for it, and it is now considered one of the most coveted vintage dresses. From my research, I think it comes in about four different colors. There's two blue variations, a pink and a green version as well. And I personally have hunted for this dress for many, many years, and I eventually found one in my size. <laughs> and here she is. If you follow me on my social media, you might remember a reel where I showed my cleaning process of this dress as she was quite filthy when I got her, but she is all lovely and sparkly. With this dress being so coveted, it is only logical for a person who sews to want to try and make their own version. So I have had this idea <laughs> basically since I started learning how to sew and I first saw this dress on screen. Originally, this dress is seen in the 1959 Montgomery Ward catalogue, although weirdly enough, there's no brand label. Montgomery Ward was a bit of a mail order company before they became a department store. So this dress has no labels, no size tags, no information about anything which makes her especially tricky to track down. She seems quite simple in her construction as she has a darted bodice, a bubble skirt, I'll get into that later, but the main thing that people fawn over is of course the lovely cummerbund and a big booty bow. I don't know what it is about a big booty bow but it just makes me happy. A few years ago, I think it would have been 2019 or, yeah, I think it was 2019, I was competing in a international pageant and I wanted to make a replica of this dress. And I found out I only had two days to do so before I fly out to this pageant. So, promise you won't laugh. I made this. What you buy on Wish. What arrives. This was my first attempt and I didn't have a lot of time so I sewed up a very basic darted bodice. I didn't even bother with the v-neck on the back and a rather sad excuse for a bow. I mean okay she needs a steam but she is not great. This was my first ever attempt and I think I did an okay job. Of course when I wear it the cummerbund sits up. I could only afford one meter of the raw silk for the cummerbund because it was just too expensive any other way. But I'm glad to be giving this project a actual proper go. Let's talk fabric. I wanted a floral cluster print. Florals, easy to get, no problem. But getting a cluster of florals as opposed to the whole thing being most aggressively floral, which I'm normally for, I had to keep my eye out for the perfect fabric. When I was in Kuala Lumpur back in 2000 and I want to say 15, yeah, this is how long I've had this project in mind, I found this fabric. I know, right? This is a cotton silk blend. It is so soft and beautiful and it features red clusters of florals, which is exactly what I wanted to get the clusters of florals that the original dress has. I think I bought four and a half or five meters 
because I was only quite new to sewing back then. I didn't know how much I would need. So I wanted to over purchase just in case I made a mistake. We're getting to the sewing, I promise. Just a few more background details. For the cummerbund, I really liked working with the silk, but I couldn't afford the prices that are at my local stores. So I ended up finding an online retailer, I think from Indonesia, who sells really beautiful silks and the most gorgeous colors available. And it was really, really well priced. I'm not an expert in silk and this feels slightly more like a silk polyester blend, but for what I needed it for, it was actually perfect. It's got a closer texture to the original than what the raw silk had. So I bought a couple of meters off the red. Whew. Now, Let's talk patterns. This is the original pattern I use. This is Butterick 5748 and probably my most sewn pattern. I can't tell you how many dresses I've made out of this pattern. It is brilliant for beginners, give it a go. I thought that with the neckline being quite similar to the original, all I would have to do is edit the back and turn it into a V-neck and then I can attach the cummerbund one word I can't say, so I'm sure I'm pronouncing it incorrectly this entire video. Sorry if that bothers you. Other options I had were the Butterick 6318, which has a sash that you tie around the front and then wrap it around the back and then you tie it off. Now I know looking at the pictures on the back, the bow isn't a bow, it's just a knot. So I would have to fix that up. The other thing is this is a wider, not as fitted bodice, and it has built-in sleeves, which even though this is sleeveless, I kinda wanna keep it to that lovely fitted, so this was an option. And back when I really wanted to work on this, in 2018, I bought this pattern from My Vintage Wish. It is the Simplicity 1795, and it is a very close replica off the dress. And I figured that would be a good pattern to try. So let's get started. The first thing I did was have a massive brain tickle about what I want to do in terms of pattern. I really couldn't decide between the three patterns. I started tossing in some other patterns and then I realized the key to life is kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. So I went with Old Faithful Butterick 5748. I traced the back pieces and adjusted it so it would turn into a lower V-neck. I sort of guesstimated with this and made some rough measurements, but in the end, I was pretty happy with it. Because I had so much of the cotton floral fabric, I could really play with my pattern placement. In saying this, why I didn't think to pattern match, no idea why I had, this is the project to pattern match, but I didn't. So I very carefully cut out all my pieces, which are one front piece, two back pieces, and the skirt, which was made out of a couple of panels. My normal skirt length is 28 inches, so that is what I kept, this one. I'm just gonna jump in here and say, the original dress has a bubble hem, meaning that the hem is held up slightly by some lining and it creates a bubbling effect as opposed to a straight skirt. Hmm, little bit of thigh poking out there, hmm, wanton flesh. I detest bubble skirts with a fiery passion. Do not like them, refuse to sew them ever again. We had to sew them in high school because that's what was in and I hated it then, still don't like them. I just don't know what it is about them. I just don't like them. I just don't like them. So I'm not sewing one. Tangent aside, back to the sewing. With all my pieces cut out, and I also have some lining pieces for the bodice, I started my construction. 
I decided to leave cutting out my red fabric cummerbund to last. I just wanted to focus on the bodice and then when I was confident enough, which you know it's taken me little years to get to this point, I will cut into my red fabric. I know the construction of this pattern by heart so I started by sewing in my darts and then I attached my front and back pieces at the shoulders and did the same for the lining. This is where my first goof comes in. Normally when I make this pattern, I attach the sides together from the front and the back bodice and I do so by sewing the two fabrics together and then the lining together. So when I fold down the lining, it's all one piece. Hope that makes sense. For this one, because I knew the cummerbund was going to be sewn into the inner seams, I thought it would be better to treat the front and back pieces as one with the lining included as opposed to thinking about the lining separately. Mm -mm, wrong. What I should have done is when I attach the cummerband, I should have only attached it to the fabric and then the lining could have been attached on top and sewn down. We learn. It's all explained in my blog with pictures. But moving along. The trickiest part was figuring out the cummerbund. I started by making some measurements and taking some notes as to what the final length was, how much fabric I wanted to put in, and adding that to the allowances. I figured that this front piece would be one piece that I would sew and gather in the middle and then attach that. Now I have to say that on the original dress, the bodice piece doesn't extend past the cummerband. So there's no waistline where the skirt and bodice meet. Instead, the cummerbund is sewn directly into the bodice and then into the fabric of the skirt. I did not feel confident enough. I've never made my own pattern and I've never really studied pattern making. That's something I would love to do in the future. So what I wanted to do was keep this as simple and as beginner friendly. So if you are watching this and want to do this, this is a way I still recommend doing. I was going to attach the cummerbund into the sides and keep the bodice fabric intact. So it wasn't going to be cut, it was still going to have a proper dress. So if you unpick the cummerbund, you would still have a dress. I did make another goo further on, which I kind of will explain, but we'll get there. I will have on my blog the measurements for my cummerbund. And if you are hoping to make this, please use that as a guide and adjust to your own sizing. So I made sure my waist was still 28 inches all the way around. And that measurement came from the center to the outside. And I made sure that times four for each, I guess, quad of my bodice, it would add up to 28 plus one inch seam allowance for the zip to get put in because I always need that extra space. We were getting somewhere. We were getting somewhere. I decided to line each of my cummerbund pieces. So I cut out two pieces each and then sewed it together so all the seams were intact. This is sort of an extra step that I didn't have to do because I could have just hemmed it, but I kind of liked having it done properly just in case it starts to fray, which I don't think it would have, but it worked. I thought at this stage, it's probably best that I attach the skirt to the bodice. So having four panels of skirt, I added one panel to each back half. As the back is two panels, they had their own skirt piece gathered. And the front being one panel, I connected two panels of skirt and then gathered that and pinned it all up. It should look something like this. Okay, so it is day two and I have my bodice here. Hi, Brian. And I have pinned it to my skirt, leaving the lining out of the way. We have the sides over here. Normally, I wouldn't baste the lining together and I just sew the sides together like that. 
But what I'm thinking is when I put this on the front, I will pin this to the sides and then I will incorporate that into the skirt. Not sure how this is going to go. This is a figure it out as we proceed. But I've got two skirt panels on the front. I will be attaching one to each side and that will create four panels. And I think that's everything. All right, let's get started. To this, I've been added on my cummerbund by slowly pinning along the edges, measuring carefully. So when I sewed it together, the tops and the bottoms of the cummerbund would align as closely as possible. For me, one of the main focal points is the center gathers off the front of the cummerbund. So after I gathered it to the size that I wanted, I basted it to make sure that the gathers wouldn't move. And then I began sewing the cummerbund to my dress pieces. I began by sewing the ends down just by basting them to make sure the cummerbund wouldn't move. And then I sewed all my dress pieces together. This is when I realized I definitely should have kept the lining out of the way of the fabric as from the inside you can see all the seams. But because I'm just sewing for myself, I am okay with that and it is just something that I will have to remember next time I give this project a go. Okay, so at this point we basically have this dress almost done. We just have to add the biggest feature which of course is that big booty bow. Okay, so I have the bow. I have sealed the edges. It's still raw down the middle. My plan is to gather it here to make it more bow-like and then attach the center of the bow in the middle. I will then hand sew it to the back of the dress. I'm going to open up the back seam and sew this into the back or at least two or three inches where this will line up. And then we just got a hem and we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But we're getting there. Most of this bow is hand sewn onto the back, especially the bow petals. But the bottom of the bow is actually sewn into the back seam of the skirt. So I ended up unpicking some of my back seam of the skirt and sewed my bow in. I left enough room to make sure that when I added in my zip, the zip wouldn't be in the way. If you look at the original, the zip being a lap zipper goes all the way down and then the lap sort of gets folded over and then there's a press stud to hold the bow up. That's sort of what I was going for. But one thing I didn't realize was I should have added an extra half an inch allowance into the back because I completely forgot that this pattern doesn't give you enough space for a lap zipper. So mine is just a normal exposed zipper. Something to remember for next time. And after I hemmed my skirt, she was done. Ta-da! Here is my second attempt at a Betty Draper dress. Compared to the first one, we are already miles ahead. I think the bodice is basically the same. It all just comes down to the cummerbund. As you can see, I can definitely get my fingers underneath her and sort of tuck her out. She's not as pointed on the bottom as she is on this one. I'm not 100% on the bow in the back though. I mean, Oh, she's got a bit of a pucker. You were behaving so well yesterday. The biggest difference for me in the back of the dress is definitely the zip. I should have sewn in an invisible zipper at least, but I just didn't have one on hand. And also, my invisible zippers are never invisible. I don't know how I've got all the feet, but it's just something that eludes me as a skill. I am a little bit sad about the way the bow turned out because it's not exactly as lovely as the original. I think if I add more height and more of an angle in my curve, it'll 
waterfall a little bit nicer. But honestly, I don't think it's that bad of a go. For a project that I've been playing with since about 2014 or 15, it definitely has taken me a while to even get to this stage. So I'm pretty happy with myself. I am a perfectionist, so the minor flaws really bother me, but that's something that I'm learning on with me. I do want to give this dress another go. And I have something really exciting for that. Already have my fabric picked out. I just hope I have enough because it's something I found in my stash. When I posted my Betty Draper washing reel, I had one of my friends point out that Gertie, the seamstress, has also just made herself a Betty Draper dress. I am so happy that somebody was on the same wavelength, although I'm sure she got the idea and executed it a lot quicker than I did in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Really? It took me seven years. I don't think it took Gertie seven years to go from idea to project, but I would love to see how she does hers. Of course, doing this version, I know a little bit about how to change the inside lining and how I would change the zip and the bow. But coming from a professional, I'm so excited to see her notes and compare. <laughs> that is everything I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me on another vintage sewing adventure. I have a couple sewing projects that I'm hoping to film for you guys soon. But on my blog, I have been smashing out a whole bunch of sewing pattern reviews because not everything needs its own video, but everything will have its own real and cute little video. So find me on Instagram if you'd love to see that. I hope you guys all have a wonderful week. If you'd like any more information, as I said, my blog has it all. It is linked in the description box below. I will see you guys all next week with a brand new video. But until then, be kind, be true, be you. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.